Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Where do they send you if you get hurt playing peekaboo? The ICU. I had to do that cheesy intro, especially since this week we are doing a peekaboo cup. So I just thought, how fitting. If you like that joke and you like tumblers and you like tutorials and you like price breakdowns, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button for me. I greatly appreciate it. So this week we're going to be tackling the motherhood tumbler and I'm going to go ahead and give you a spoiler alert. It doesn't work, unfortunately, but that's okay. <laughs> we're still going to do it anyway because I promised you guys that I would show you all of my mistakes and everything like that along the way. So I got a few different requests for this motherhood tumbler and I was like, heck yeah, I'm so excited to do it. Also, I wanted to throw out a really quick disclaimer because I had gotten a message about my Tacket Tumblr video. So the message basically consisted of, are we able to use Tacket because I didn't think the owners recommended it. So I did dive a little deeper because I hadn't actually heard of this. And I did read on the group where it does say that the owners don't recommend using Tacket. That's just because they don't feel like it actually gets a stable base underneath all of the Crystalac. I also have read the same thing about Mod Podge. Guys, this is just my personal preference, experience. You can use whatever way you want. I know for the Tacket, you can use Bright Tone to apply it. You can use Mod Podge to apply it. You can use several other things to apply it. So if you want to do one of those methods instead, please go ahead. I was just showing you the method I thought works best for me. If you have any questions about any of the products that I am using versus what the owners of Crystal Act are saying, please feel free to message me. I will dive into the group. I will make sure I'm giving out the right information and everything like that. If you have any ideas or anything that you would like to see, please leave the comments below. I know I did see a request for the Bee Tumbler and the Beach Tumbler on last week's video. So that is definitely something I put into the calendar and I will make sure those are happening. Okay. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and jump in. Thank you so much for being patient with me. I really, really, really appreciate it. Hey guys, so we're going to go ahead and get our cup prepped. So if you look, you see how shiny it is. We are going to rough it up a little bit. So take your sandpaper and just go all over the cup. This is going to create a type of dust and that is going to show where you've been and where you go. The reason we're doing this is to create a more bearable surface for the crystal act to stick to. As you're sanding your cup, make sure that you're going up to down and then make sure you stick to the very bottom under that line and then also get the bottom of the cup. Those are going to be your trouble areas. So now you're going to go ahead and wash your tumbler. I know that I have seen in many posts where they say only with Dawn. I use Polymolive and it works great. Um, if you use something else, it's okay. I think they only just recommend Dove because it's the one that gets the most grease off. When you are done washing it, you are going to let it dry, completely dry. Then you are going to take a coffee filter. This is going to get rid of any dirt or debris left on the cup. Hey guys. Okay, so we are about to make our paint for our motherhood tumbler. This is gonna be the glitter color that we are trying to match. It's a purple base. I don't know how well you can see that. So we're gonna take our universal white and I have one of the black containers I got from the Crystal Act shop. I used half an ounce of the ultra white. I put in two drops of the number two red put in one drop of the number two five and since I wanted to add a little bit of the purple as well I added just a drop of the purple delight I did the red then I did the purple I still didn't like it and then I did the blue and so you guys can see this is the color so it's really pretty so I suggest laying paper towel just in case. I made a mess last night. This is my third attempt at this color and the blue got everywhere. I'm actually surprised it didn't ruin my nails because I definitely thought it was going to. But it definitely did ruin my placemat. So definitely put down paper towels. Be smarter than me, please. All right, guys. We have our tumbler freshly cleaned. 
We're going to use this brush that we got from the Crystalac store. And then I do plan on doing two coats of this. So I do figure that one coat is not going to fully cover it. Oh, it's much more pink than I thought. Oh, that is actually very pretty. Alright guys, our cup is officially dry. Uh, that is going to be the look of it. It's definitely a darker purple, but I think it looks pretty good. It doesn't have the pink element that the glitter does, but I'm happy with it. So now we are going to paint it a second time and I'm going to remix my paint right now because I see that it almost got, it almost has streaks of red. So I just want to make sure it's all one consistent color. I'm starting by taking my brush all the way to the top and then I'm just slightly moving down as I go and this will help create the evenness and this will also help try to get rid of any pulling that you might have at the top. And then just so you guys are aware, the paint will start drying really fast. It's okay. When you're done with the bottom, just go ahead, brush the whole entire cup to make sure you get that evenness and then do the bottom. Okay, so if you have a lot of pulling paint at the top, I don't necessarily have any, but a good way is to go like this around the top because then you're gonna get it but it's also going to remove all the paint and it will still keep that look. You won't see that it's a completely different way. Okay, so now we're going to paint the bottom. Also, same thing on the bottom you can do. I try to do it right under the line. All right, so that's it, we're done. This cup is officially done being painted. I like the color compared to it. I think it looks good. We are going to be letting this dry and then we're going to be Mod Podging and glitter it. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna let this dry for four hours and I'll see you back in a bit. All right, it is dry and it is beautiful. I love it. It's pretty much streak free. Um, looks great. So now we're going to be doing our Mod Podge. So, so if you've never applied Mod Podge before, what you're going to do is just glob it on and then start spreading it out. I am going to do two coats of this. So I am putting it on pretty heavy. Perfection is not what I'm going for. I'm just going for a really good coverage. As you can see when my Mod Podge starts to pool, I also do the little trick that I showed you with the paint up top. That way I can spread it out evenly. Your Mod Podge will also start drying very fast. Pay extra close attention to the top and the bottom of your cup. These are going to be the parts that dry the absolute fastest. When you feel like you have enough applied, just remember to go over your full cup with long, even strokes. This will help with the evenness. It'll also make sure that you don't have glitter clumping in uh, one big place. And as you are doing these long strokes, if you get excess Mod Podge, do not be afraid to wipe that off your brush. It is okay. It is not a waste of product. You want to make sure that it's nice, even, and light. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and stick that back in my Mod Podge container. I'm just going to put it off to the side. So now I'm going to apply the glitter in lines. Start pretty much at the top, go all the way down, and just rotate that around the cup. 
One of the reasons why I do like these glitter shakers is because the five holes are pretty sizable, but I do think for the next time that I do glitter, I will take the cap off and see how I like that a little better because as the glitter starts to run out, it gets harder and harder to get it out. I did make a second backup container of this glitter just in case that happened. So I did try tapping it on the table just to make sure I got all of it out. But the reason that I have that second one as backup is because I didn't necessarily have the time to scoop up all the glitter and put it back in the container. Mod Podge dries very fast, so the last thing I wanted is for the Mod Podge in that second or in that second part to start drying and me not be able to apply the glitter on it. So there was a question that I saw on the craft group that was, oh, when I get to the very bottom, can I just take my cup and smush it in the bottom, you don't want to do that because then you're going to contaminate all of the glitter that you um, are now able to save that's on the printer paper. Make sure you tap your cup off very well. I didn't feel like I was getting enough leverage, so I actually am starting to bang it on the table just to make sure that I get as much off. You wanna save all the money that you can with this glitter. So, we are gonna let this spin. We are going to be back to check on it, and then we are gonna decide if we're gonna do another coat or not. All right guys, so now we're gonna do our E6000. Please do not do this inside. It has a very big glue smell to it, so I would definitely not. You're just going to spray up and down the cup heavily. You are going to come up with some white spots. That is okay. It is going to dry clear. When you're all done, you're going to let it dry for about an hour, and then we're going to be able to do the smush method on it. All right, so now we're going to do our smush method. You're just going to lay your cup down on your parchment paper, pull it over, and then go ahead and rub that glitter in. It's almost like you're doing the tack it kind of, except you're not doing it immediately after. You're doing it an hour after. This is just going to cause the glitter to lay flat. This is also going to cause whenever you go to apply your extreme protection or your bright tone, you're not going to get a whole lot of glitter off of it. Make sure you also put your cup down and do the bottom. That way you're smushing the whole entire cup. A good way to tell if it's done, take your finger, press it. If there's leftover glitter, you did not smush it hard enough or put enough E6000. So now I'm going to let this dry for four hours and we're going to come back. So now it's going to be time for the extreme protection, the EP. So it feels pretty good. Put your finger on, no glitter's coming off. So this is how I apply it. I literally do a stream and then I just take my finger. So I go all the way around the cup and when I'm done with that, I move everything up to the top as well. This way I'm getting a nice coat to the top and a nice seal, but I'm not wasting a lot going into the cup. When I'm done, long, even strokes with my finger going down the cup, making sure to pull it, making sure no waste. There are going to be times you want to add more of the extreme protection. That's okay. This is all about preference. Just when you feel like it is right, then you can stop adding and just make sure that it gets completely even. Now for the bottom, what I personally do is I go under the line and just smooth it out, make sure there's not getting like clumpiness. Take my bottle and I'm just going to do a little tiny dab, swirl it in. 
tiny dab, swirl it in over and over until it's fully covered. And then I'm gonna make sure to connect it with the rim of the cup. So that is the first coat of EP done. We're gonna let that dry. All right, we are back doing our second coat of extreme protection. Some notes about how the cup currently feels. It feels very gritty, it feels very grainy, which is to be expected because we've only done one super thin layer. All right, so I'm gonna do the same exact thing as last time. I'm gonna go around and then I'm gonna actually go around a second time just because my cup feels so grainy. Then I'm gonna pull everything to the top Then I'm going to do long, even strokes down the cup again. Again, this is gonna be all about preference. If you feel like you wanna put a little bit more on, go ahead. I did have a few little drops of waste this time. That's just from putting it on too fast, so make sure to keep an eye on that. I tried to get a better angle, but same thing for the bottom. Just tiny drops, rub it in, and then connect it with the cup. Okay, we're going to let this go for an hour. Then we're going to put it into the hang method, and then I'll be back in about three hours. So, feeling this cup, again, still feels gritty. We're going to be doing the same exact thing as the last two times, just putting in the middle going all the way around it. This cup does feel really gritty. So again, I'm gonna go a little bit heavier on this coat. Then I will go ahead and start moving it to the top and then start evening it out by doing long strokes. And then again, doing the bottom the same way, going ahead and putting a tiny little dot and just rubbing it in. Perfect. We are all done. I'm going to see you back here for our fourth and final coat before our first sanding. Okay guys, so we're gonna do our fourth coat and I'm actually gonna do bright tone this time only because it still feels very grainy and I wanna make sure that this is going smooth into our first sanding. Don't ever be afraid to mix it up. Extreme protection and bright tone can be put in any kind of order or just use one or just use the other. But making sure to do the final one as bright tone. Okay guys, so same exact process. We're going to put it on because this is bright tone. I'm going to go a little bit thicker, but not too, too heavy because it's already going to be a heavier, heavier consistency. After I go around the cup, then I'm going to go ahead and start moving it up to the top. Then I am going to do the long strokes down to even it all out.
So throughout doing the cup, if I have any excess on my finger, I wipe it on the bottom. And so I go ahead and I make sure to rub that in first before I add any additional uh, stuff on. So now I'm going to be adding the bright tone again, small dabs, rubbing it in in circles, and then doing that until it's complete and then rubbing it in with the rim. Okay, that is all applied, that is all done. We are gonna give that the four hours and then I'm gonna see you back here to sand. Okay guys, our cup is dry. We are going to be sanding it now. So we're gonna sand it the exact same way that we prepped it. So we're just gonna go ahead and sand it. If you can tell, that's gonna be the gray dust you're looking for. That's gonna show you where you've been, where you still need to go. And this is definitely when you're gonna start actually feeling the cup take shape. It's gonna get so much smoother after your first sanding. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do inside the cup. The reason I do it like this is because the top is a hot spot anyway, and going inside of the cup also allows you to get any dried on crystal act. Then focus on the bottom and underneath that line. Now for washing, it's going to be the same. You are definitely going to pick up on all the little bumps and any kind of inconsistencies you feel now, only because your cup is going to be, for the most part, smooth. Go ahead and wash it with soap. For me, I definitely make sure to wash inside the cup now, especially since I sand it inside the cup. All right, so texturally, this is exactly where we want to be. We're definitely going to do three more coats and then another sanding, but we are making our way along. It looks very good. I'll see you guys back in a bit to do our next coat. Okay, so we are going to be putting on Extreme Protection. This is our fifth coat on this cup. So far, it feels really good. It does definitely feel like not as smooth as I would like yet, but that's okay because we still have to sand it before we can put the decal and stuff on it. Okay guys, since you have seen this four other times before, I'm just going to go fast. Same exact process, going around the cup, doing the top, doing long strokes to get to the bottom, making sure that we do our bottom and connect it with the rim of the cup. As long as you're following the same exact process of before, this is honestly going to be pretty repetitive. This cup's turning out really pretty. I'm really happy of it. I'm going to wait four hours and then I'll see you back here for the next coat. So we are going to be doing our sixth coat right now. We are going to be using extreme protection. Again, I did go ahead and speed it up since um, this is the fifth time. Because I was at a weird angle, I actually started the middle and went like all the way up um, to the top. And then I went ahead and went down. I did do two coats on this one because I knew that we're getting close to the layers where we are supposed to be putting on the vinyl. So in order to make that happen, I am going to do thicker layers this coat and maybe even a thicker layer next coat. That way, this last sanding is our last sanding. We can go ahead and move forward with the vinyl and everything like that. After every layer, you can definitely feel the difference and see how smooth it's feeling. So we are going to let this dry for four hours and then we're gonna do one last coat. Okay, now we are going to begin our seventh coat and we are gonna be doing extreme protection. Since this is gonna be our last coat before our second sanding, I am gonna go ahead and put it on pretty thick. Make sure to do the same exact steps, rub it in, make sure you hit the top, make sure you hit the bottom. Also on this one, really make sure that everything feels spread out and everything feels smooth. It will matter when you go to do your sanding, how much pressure you have to put and everything like that. The cup is feeling great, so we're gonna move ahead to our second sanding. Alrighty guys, so we have just finished our seventh layer. So now we're going to go ahead and sand the cup. 
We are going to sand this exactly like last time. Make sure to keep an eye out for the dirt. Make sure you hit those hot spots that you feel are coming up under the line, the very bottom, and the top. As far as washing it, that will also be the same process too. Really, really, really concentrate on the smoothness. Really make sure everything feels good. If you have to go back and sand some more, it is totally fine. But you want to make sure that this definitely doesn't have any bumps. All right, now that that is done, we are going to let that completely dry. We are going to wipe it off with a coffee filter to remove dirt and debris. And then we're going to start the process of making it a peekaboo. So I just went ahead and cut out all of my decals for our motherhood tumbler. So I already have them done and I already have them put under transfer tape. I found these really cool vines. So my vines are gonna wrap around the top. And then I also found some other really cool stuff like a volcano. Don't know how well you can see this stuff, but we'll try. Um, I did some trees. I did the normal slashes and feet paw prints. And then I did a couple different sizes of those. Okay, so now we are gonna go ahead, we are gonna get started. Something I do do is I put the stopper that kind of stabilizes it. I'm gonna go ahead and try and get the biggest pieces on first. So I know, for instance, I really want the trees and the volcano to go on first. That way I can kind of plan my cup accordingly. So there you go. There are my trees. Something I would definitely say to do, make sure you're planning out where you want these to go because I did a peekaboo one time where I put entirely too many and it was a crowded, 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 clumpy mess. So yeah, always make sure to try and like plan it out now. I know some people also, when they do peekaboos for really big logos like the motherhood symbol, they will curve it. I do not. I've never. So that's my volcano. is not going to interfere too much with the logo since the logo is pretty big. Then I'm just going to take it, I'm just going to wrap it around the cup. If I did it right, they should intersect. So that's my vine going around the top. I did initially find two pairs of paw prints and I wanted to do them both. But then I was just like, yeah, it might be too much. Scratch marks. So we kind of did one like it's coming up the side, which I think actually looks pretty cool. So then I did scratches kind of coming up, which I think is kind of cool. Okay, so that's my last scratch. So like I said, now I'm just gonna look around for other places to put paw prints. I have one more paw print that I can put. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave it as is. I'm just gonna trash that. So here is our completed with vinyl tumbler. Yeah, I think it looks really good. In the event, everybody ready?
So since I started painting, I'm realizing that it's almost repelling off of the vinyl. You can see it really good right here, the motherhood, the trees, and everything like that. So I tried to put it on the turner for a more controlled environment. I tried to put on really thick layers. I tried to put on really thin layers. Nothing was working. So... I went ahead and I did research this. I haven't been able to find out an answer yet. The only thing that I can think of is maybe next time, instead of doing a black gloss, to do the ultra white with maybe one of the black paint additives and see how that works. So you'll notice it way more towards the end though. I'm not sure why it's doing that. I'm going to let this go for an hour and then I'm probably going to hit it with at least another coat, maybe two. Alright, so still I've not been able to figure out why on earth this is repelling. So we're just going to go ahead and do the second coat and see how it is. So I let the cup dry for an hour and when I started to hit it again, I realized how much better it was taking the paint. So I'm not sure if it was just the first one was very streaky and repelling. I'm not quite sure what happened, but the second coat did way better. Anyway, we are done with our second coat. We are probably going to be putting a third coat on just in case. So we are going to let this spin for an hour and I'll be back. Okay guys, so our second coat of black gloss is all done dry. And honestly, it looks amazing. I don't think that it's going to need a third coat. I'm not still sure what happened with the first coat, but I put the second coat on pretty thick. And as you can see, it looks really good. So I have my X-Acto knife and I have my tweezers.
Okay, so I had let this cup dry for four hours and it seemed ready. The vinyl was coming off pretty easy and while some of them were pretty complex designs and that's what was kind of like holding it up, everything else was, was pretty smooth. The other peekaboos that I have done, I would compare just to this. I thought they were going really well. And as you are about to see, this one is not. So I stated previously that I would share all my mistakes with you. This is that. Um, there's, there's no other reason for sharing this besides sometimes this is how it goes. Sometimes not all cups turn out right. And it's just one of those things in life. Because this video is coming at you late since I was moving, I really don't want to extend another week in order to fix this cup. So we're just going to go ahead with it now. And when I went to took it off, it stripped it all the way down to the glitter, everything. Um, so it's a tiny bit of leftover glitter and some paint, and that is it. I'm not entirely sure what happened. Next week, we are going to be doing a peekaboo cup with a twist. So if you have made it this far and this did not happen to you, go ahead, put it back on the turner. Do another layer of bright tone. When that is fully dried, after the four hours, you do another layer of bright tone. And then when that is dried, you'll do your final layer of bright tone, depending on how it feels to you. If you feel like, eh, it still doesn't feel right, go ahead and sand it and go ahead and, and continue layering. Sorry guys, I don't, I don't know. I don't even know what to say about this. This is just... This is awful. So anyway, that is going to wrap up our tutorial for the day. Unfortunately, I might revisit this in the future, but as of right now, I'm so frustrated with this cup and just so done with it. So I doubt I'm gonna be doing that anytime soon. But if you guys have ever had to strip a cup, you know exactly what I'm going through. And I will be doing a Saturday special video where I show you how to strip this specific cup because it's getting done. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.